Hey there, this is Ruben Lerner, and welcome to my talk, When is an Exception Not an Exception? Warnings in Python. So, I want to start off with something that we're all familiar with, and that is when we drive our car, or other vehicle, I guess, and assuming that we don't have an electric car, we have to worry about filling up with gas every so often. And I don't know about you, and I don't know how about your family is, but my family tends to be pretty bad about doing this. So we'll see that the fuel gauge is going closer and closer to empty, and we'll say, well, you know, maybe we should probably get some gas. But then we don't do it. And then you know what happens? That's right, this yellow light goes on. By the way, if you have never seen this yellow light go on, I promise you, you are better off. But this yellow light, scary and annoying and frustrating as it is, and something that my family sees far too often, is actually a good thing. Because you wouldn't want the car just to run out of gas and stop on the side of the road, or not on the side of the road, um, when it's done. You want to have some sort of warning. You want to know when things are about to go wrong, when if you don't take action, there could be a real catastrophe. And so it's good that we have this warning. Um, when I was growing up in the U.S., we used to call these lights idiot lights because your car was basically saying, hey, dummy, pay attention. You really need to do something. You need to change your ways. Otherwise, bad things could happen. Sort of like what I used to say to my children when they were little. If you don't listen, bad things will happen. By the way, terrible parenting statement, but I'll go on from there. In any event, what we would sometimes like and need is a low fuel light for our software. We don't want something that's going to crash our program. We do want it to be annoying. We do want it to be persistent, that it'll get us to change. Or, if we are the ones who have written the software, that it'll get our users to change. Right? And we want to, to have the software equivalent of what I used to tell my children. If you don't change soon, bad things will happen. And so, what I'm talking about in this talk is warnings. And warnings have actually been around in Python for a very long time. And we see them all the time. But in my experience, we don't quite know what to do with them. We don't quite know how to use them. We certainly don't know how to take advantage of them when we're writing code and want to warn other people of potential problems. So warnings have been around for quite some time, as I said, back in 2000. So that's what, 22 years ago as I record this. Right in PEP 220, at 230, I'm sorry. And it was first added to Python 2.1. Now, one of the reasons why warnings were added to Python was that even then they knew that there are going to be breaking changes in Python 3. And so this was a way of saying, hey, you probably want to change what you're doing here so that you can get things to work or that things will work when we switch to Python 3. Now, you have probably seen warnings already in your use of Python. So here I'll give an example from a version or two ago. If you say from collections, import mapping. So several versions ago, this was no longer going to work. Actually, as of Python 3.10, this no longer works. But we knew several years in advance that this was going to change, and we wanted to give people a chance to change their ways. So already in Python 3.3, if you tried to do this from collections, import mapping, what would you get? That's right, you would get a warning. You would get a deprecation warning. And it would say, using or importing the ABCs from collections instead of from collections ABC is deprecated since Python 3.3, and 3.10 it will stop working. Now think of it. Think of how long this warning was around for then. Assuming that there's a new version of Python every year, and it was not always the case, sometimes it was every year and a half, that is at least seven years of warnings in which we were told, you'd better change your ways. Now, if you don't listen to all those warnings, yeah, bad things will happen, right? But the assumption is that if the warnings happen often enough, then you will at some point change your ways and things won't go catastrophically wrong. Now, do we ne really need warnings? And the answer is, of course, yes and no. We could use exceptions. Exceptions already exist in Python, and we use exceptions all the time. Now, People often think that exceptions are terrible. I actually think exceptions are great. Exceptions ensure that we have this separate communications channel within our program that does not interfere with our data when we're sending or retrieving data from either a function or a method or working with a class of some sort. 
It allows us to be outside of the normal channel of communication so we can't confuse whether we've gotten a value back from a function or whether an exception was raised. Um, and we can use them to indicate that something unusual, something, well, exceptional has happened. And this is my, my, you know, my cell phone metaphor, as I wrote here in the notes. So let's say you're talking to someone face to face and your cell phone rings. Now, maybe you're from a country where you are all very cultured and nice and you ignore the cell phone because, of course, your friend with whom you're speaking is standing there right in front of you. But what can I say? I live in a country in Israel and I've been to many countries all over the world where clearly your friend is less important than your cell phone, whoever it happens to be calling. And so you'll say, hold on a second, answer your cell phone, take care of the call, put down the cell phone, maybe say excuse me, and then continue with your face-to-face -face conversation. That is what exceptions do. Exceptions are like that cell phone. They say you must stop what you're doing and deal with this new incoming message. It doesn't interfere with the conversation, except in that it interferes with the flow of it. Now, the nice thing about exceptions is that we can trap them. We can use try and accept to say, I assume this will all work well, unless there's an exception, in which case I know what to do. Moreover, we can distinguish between different kinds of exceptions. So if I want to trap a zero division error, but I don't want to trap an index error, I can do that using exceptions. And then we can make decisions about whether we want to ignore them or not. So there are lots of great things about exceptions, but there are also some bad things about exceptions. One of the big ones is if you don't catch an exception, the program ends. And people often see in Python, right, a program exits because there was an unhandled exception. Now, people in the programming language world would say, that's not a crash. Your program didn't crash. You just didn't handle the exception. And, you know, that's true, but come on, we all know it's a crash. I mean, it's not technically a crash, but it's not something we want. Basically, if an exception is raised and no one traps it and handles it, then the program exits. And whether you think that's a crash or an unhandled exception or something else, it doesn't matter. It's not something we really want. We want to be able to gently give people messages and warn them. We don't want to throw the whole program out just because there was a problem. Now, in some other languages, you might need to trap for any exception that might be raised. In Python, any exception could be raised at any time. And so using exceptions to warn developers would force more use of try and accept and make our code less readable. Well, let's try another version of this. Instead of raising the exception, we could just use print, right? I can just print what's going on. Well, first of all, print is just not serious or scary enough. I need something that's really going to annoy people, really get under their skin. So they're going to say, oh, yeah, I should really deal with this. The other thing is if you use print, the output from print might get mixed up with a regular program output. And, and so, well, you could always print it to standard error instead of standard out. It just gets annoying and weird and, and frustrating. And then you've got to put all these print statements in there as well. Moreover, you can't filter or trap them in a standard way. It's all or nothing more or less. And that's where warnings come in. So how can we use warnings? So let's take a simple example here. I've got a function and my function is called hello. And so def hello takes an argument which we assign to the parameter name, and we're going to return the string hello name. All right, now I'm going to change this function so it takes a list of inputs rather than a single string. By the way, right now, right, I'm not doing type checking, I'm not doing any sort of checking of any sort, so people could already give me a list of strings, but I want to get a list of inputs. Very good. So what am I going to do before this change goes into effect? Now, after it's gone into effect, before... I add a warning to the function telling that things will be changing. So what's the first thing I have to do to use warnings? I have to import the warnings module. It's part of the standard library. It comes with Python, but it's not loaded automatically. You must say import warnings. And then what do I do? Well, I say warnings.warn. So the warn function in the warnings module allows me to warn. You can think of this as sort of a light raising of an exception, right? And then we say, what message do we want to pass? Right, so I say warnings.warn, this is the message, and very good. And now if I run the program from hello and port hello, and I'm going to print hello world, look at this. I run the program, and I get, look at this, user warning coming soon, pass a sequence of strings. Now what's going on here? What is it telling me? Because the output here from the warning system has a lot of information packed into it. One of those things is it tells me what file and what line number. A second thing it tells me is what kind of warning. Now I didn't say what kind of warning it was. But it turns out that just as we have different kinds of exceptions, we have different kinds of warnings. And we're going to see more about that in just a moment. And then, well, there's the message that I passed, right? That's the string. So, and then it tells me that this was called by warnings.warn, and like this was the part of the program. And here, actually, it's just printing hello world. Now, why is it important that it's printing hello world? Because warnings don't stop the program from running. The program still runs. It's just going to add the warning information to us. 
Now, all of this output here was mixed up, right? The things that were printed and the warnings, but actually they were printed at two separate channels. The warning output is sent to standard error. So you'll, you'll only see it if you have not redirected standard error and if they've mixed together. So what we saw in the previous slide was standard out, standard error together. But if you redirect standard error to a log file, to an error file, or if you redirect standard out to a file, then you can separate them out pretty easily. So it's pretty standard to redirect standard out somewhere, and then you'll still see the warnings on the terminal. Again, the point is to annoy you. The point is to frustrate you so that you actually take action. And so if I do this, use hello greater than hello.txt, so I'm going to redirect the standard output to hello.txt, I will still get the warnings, right? And that will show up there. Now, you've already heard me say this a little bit, but warnings are there to plan in advance, to warn in advance of a potentially breaking change. You want to give your users some time to transition. So this means thinking ahead. This means planning ahead. Not always something that we are good at. I can speak for myself. Definitely not something that I'm good at. So you need to think about what am I going to change in the future that will adversely or might adversely affect my users. Now, Python has been a model of doing this as a programming language where anytime something is going to break, you get warnings, so to speak, years ahead of time. You know what's going to change. You know what's going to break. And so you can take uh, advantage of the, that time to fix things up and to change your programs. But do try to give your users some time to transition here. Well, I mentioned before that user warning is a category, sort of like an exception class. Now, why would I care about this? I care about this for two reasons, actually. First of all, it gives me some semantic power. I can know what type of warning there is as a person looking at the code, looking at the output, looking at the warnings, by just seeing the user warning here. It's user warning versus another kind of warning, and we'll see some others in a moment. The other thing is I can filter and detect different kinds of warnings, much as I can do try and accept on different kinds of exceptions uh, in Python. So I can say accept on, on a stand, you know, accept exception, which is terrible, but people do it. Or I can say accept index error, accept zero division error, and identify particular kinds of exceptions. You can think of warning categories as exception classes because here's the amazing thing. Warning categories are exception classes. If I go to user warning dot dunder basis, and dunder basis is the attribute that we always have on a class, and warnings are classes, of course. So dunder basis tells us from what class does this class inherit? And guess what user warning basis inherits from? It inherits from warning. Okay, well, that wasn't very exciting, right? But what does warning inherit from? from exception. So warnings are exceptions, but they are specific kinds of exceptions meant to be used for, well, for warnings. And here are some different warning categories that Python comes from. Regular warning, user warning, deprecation warning, right? So a user warning is the most general version. You shouldn't really be doing anything with the warning category itself. It's sort of like doing something with exception in main Python. You, you don't want to do that. User warning is the default. Deprecation warnings means, hey, this is going to change in the future you should really change your code. Syntax warning, and here we're saying the syntax of the language is gonna change in the future, you should change your code. Runtime warning, well, you know, maybe you should be paying attention because this is gonna cause problems. And you can even have a pending deprecation warning. And pending deprecation means it's not deprecated yet, but it probably will be in the future, and so you should move away from this kind of thing. And so if I want to specify a category, when I issue a warning, I can say warnings.warn, just like I did before with a string, but then I can pass that second argument being a category, a warnings category. And because these categories are all exception classes, and because all exception classes are in built-ins, these are immediately available to you in Python. You don't need to import the warnings module in order to use these warning categories. You do, however, need to import the warnings module in order to run the warn method or the warn function. Okay, now, if you run the code on the previous slide, let's just see it again for a moment, right? Def hello name warnings.warn, and we say it's a deprecation warning, okay? So I'm saying don't do this because it's going to be deprecated. If we run that code, you actually won't see any warnings. And that's because deprecation warning is filtered out by default. Normally, deprecation warnings are not displayed on the screen at all. And we're going to talk about filtering in just a little bit. But it, it, then you have to think about not just what warning categories you want to use, but what are the behaviors? And why doesn't it appear? Well, because different warnings have different filters associated with them. Again, we're going to see that in just a moment. Now, you might have heard that in Python, 
when you raise exceptions, when you use raise with an exception, you should not use the built-in exceptions. Rather, you should use your own custom exception classes. And it's so easy to do that. You just define a new class that inherits from exception. It's a good idea. It gives you more semantic power. It allows you to be more precise. Um, and, and then people know that this is something from your software. It's not from Python itself. So similarly, you should create your own custom warning categories. But your new warnings should probably subclass an existing warning type, so it'll be a filtered appropriately. If you just inherit from warning that overall warning category, uh, yeah, it's not going to get filtered necessarily the way you want. So inherit from a user warning, inherit from a deprecation warning. So let's do that. I'm going to say here import warnings because I'm going to want to use warnings. And then I'm going to define a new class. And the new class is args changing warning. And it inherits from user warning. And what do I have as the body of the class? Actually, nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing there, right? Like, I'm just not going to do anything exciting there. So I'm going to say pass. Pass is the way that we say in Python. I have nothing to say here, but I must fill this indentation with something. Otherwise, the syntax won't work. And so by having pass there, we basically say, I'm just creating this class so that it exists as a separate name. Because I know that, uh, you know, I know that, you know, I don't want to have any, what sort of functionality you're going to put in a warning class. And now that I've defined that class, I can use it. I can then, in my call to warnings.warn, pass a string, and then also pass this args changing warning. And then when we run this, well, now that we see that it's, it's inheriting from user warning, we will actually see it. Well, wait a second. What happens when we're warned? We've seen that a warning normally, right, if it's not filtered out, will be sent to standard error. But we can customize what happens to warnings. And we can customize what happens to particular categories of warnings. And this is where it gets really both complex and flexible. There is in Python a warnings filter. And we can use that warnings filter to specify what should be done with warnings. We can say what should be done for a given category based on the message contents and even the module, the file in which the warning was run. And so by default, a warning prints the first time they appear in a given file on a given line. So this means... If you have a function, like I did before with hello, and that function calls warnings.warn, and then we call that function many, many times, only the first time is going to generate a warning. The rest of the times, the assumption is, well, you know, they already know what's going on, right? Like, they don't need to. If the same warning appears in multiple places in the code, you'll see multiple messages, one for each call to warnings.warn. So it's not that we're only going to have one warning overall. We're going to have one output or one printout for each warning in each line of each code. So here's an example. If I say here from hello, import hello, and I'm going to print hello world one and world two. So what happens when I actually run this? Well, we're going to first of all see our exchanging warning coming soon past the sequence of strings. So we are warned once, but we actually called the function twice, right? The function was called twice, but we only got the one warning because again, the default action in Python is only to warn once. But wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. We got the warning on line nine of hello.py, that was where this you know, warning was, was established, right? But it's pretty obvious that it was warn, you know, generated by warning.warn, right? Like, why would I want to know that warnings.warn is where we got that warning? I want to know maybe something else. For example, maybe I don't want to know that it was warning.warn that was called. Maybe I want to know in what function was warnings.warn called so that we can know where to trace our warning to. And indeed, when we call warnings.warn, we can pass another argument. And that argument is stack level. By default, stack level is set to 1, meaning the call to warnings.warn itself. But it's pretty common to say stack level equals 2. If you do that, then we don't find out that warnings.warn issued the warning. That's kind of obvious, right? But rather, we can find out in what function, in what method, where in the code, was warnings.warn called. And so if I say here, for example, right, warnings.warn, coming soon, are exchanging warning, two. Now, when I call my code, look what happens here. I call, use, or, you know, I'm going to run use hello. It says use hello py5, so that's on line five there. And where? Where we called print hello of world. So we're not finding out that the warning was invoked in warnings.warn. Rather, we're finding out that, oh yeah, when we call print hello of world, that's where we had this warning so show up. So there are a lot of different actions that we can choose to take when there is a warning. And we can say, well, the default. The default is to print a warning once for a combination of module line number. We can raise an exception, so we can turn a warning into an exception. 
we can ignore the warning like, altogether, right? Say, oh, I don't care about this. And here we go, you know, here's a, oh, I see, I have it in a different order here. We can do always, always print, even if it's the same warning from the same line of code. So even if we have the same warning again and again, so in the previous example, we only saw the warning once, even though we called the same function twice, we would see it again and again. We can ignore it. Oh, I see. Sorry, my, my animation is going the wrong direction. We can turn into an error and exception. We can also say print it once per module, regardless of the line number, or we can only print it once, no matter where in the whole program the warning was raised. Well, let's say we want our exchanging warning to be displayed every time it occurs, no matter what. Well, every time is the always action. So how can we set that? How can we say this warning should have the always action? Well, there are a few different ways. One of them is when we call Python, we have all these arguments we can give it. And the minus W argument lets us say minus W and what the action is. And each action has a different level, so you can just, uh, a letter, so you can just abbreviate. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say here, Python 3 minus W always, use hello.py, use hello2. And this is where we call the function twice. So you see here, because I say minus W always, and of course I could have said minus WA, this means that all warnings, every time they come up, are going to be displayed for us. I should note, by the way, this is not just our warning, right, the, uh, uh, you know, our exchanging warning. This is for all warnings. This is all warnings will always be displayed all the time. Not necessarily what you want, but a good way to sort of set it in general. But what if I want to say specific actions for specific categories? Well, now the filtering gets really wild. Now I can say I want to filter based on the action. I want to filter, and that's what we've already seen. I can filter based on the message, and that is a regular expression match of what's in the message, what's in the string, and the category, on the module, that's the file name, and the line number. And we can actually pass those to minus big W. So what I can do now is I can say, for example, minus W action, colon, colon, deprecation warning. All right, so I can say, I want to do this. And now what happens here is I'm saying, I want to take action, right? I want to add always, oh, there should be always, not action, always for deprecation warning, right? And I can say, I only want to do this always if the message starts with an A. I can also say, well, actually, whenever we get a Unicode warning, I want to stop the program right away, turn that to an error. So you can see that by using these warnings, this minus W switch, in clever ways, we can set up the filtering when we call Python. And this means we don't need to change our program per se. We can change the way we invoke our program. But So, so what are the default filters? What's set up by default? Well, default uh, behavior for deprecation warning in main. So meaning if we have a deprecation warning, warning in the main program, the first program that's run, yeah, we're going to get the default things. But we're normally going to otherwise ignore deprecation warnings. Now, why would that be the case? Why would we want deprecation warnings in Dunder main and not deprecation warnings anywhere else? Because anywhere else it's going to be in something we've imported. And if I downloaded something from PyPI and I then run it, I don't want to get all the deprecation warnings from what it's doing. I just want to get those in, in my code. So we're going to ignore all the stuff from deprecation warnings, pending deprecations, import warnings, and even resource warnings. There are all sorts of things happening. But what if I don't want to call Python a different way each time with minus big W? Well, I can actually set the Python warnings environment variable. And then I just set it to be all the values that I would want. So export Python warnings, E colon colon deprecation warning, right? That means turn deprecations into errors. Or Python warnings, D resource warning, meaning use the default for resources. Well, what about our warnings? Well, actually we can't use custom warning categories from the command line. We can only use the ones, or in environment variables, we can only use the ones that are built into Python. But from within Python, we can actually call a really cool function. Fil warnings, not filter warnings, lets us specify all five of these. So if you want to be really, really like specific and really have a lot of control, use filter warnings. Most of the time, most people like me, we're just going to use simple filter. Warnings, that simple filter. And then you say what action, what category, what line number, that's usually more than enough. And finally, if you want, for whatever reason, to reset the warnings, you can do that back to the defaults. So let's see, how can I do that? So I'm going to import warnings. I'm going to import hello and our exchanging warning from the hello module. And then I'm going to say this filter. I'm going to say warning simple filter, default our exchanging warning, meaning now I want the default behavior for my warning category as well. And so what does that mean for the default? It's only going to print things once. Now, I can change the warning filters briefly, temporarily, inside of a with block using a context manager known as catch warnings. 
So I can say with warnings.catch warnings and then run whatever code I want. And the code inside of this block will run as per usual. But if it has any warnings going on there, well, I can then catch them and you know, I, can, I can do whatever I want there. Um, basically, then I can run, as I call it here, a poorly behaved function. And even if it runs lots of warnings, if it raises lots of warnings, we're going to ignore them. But as soon as we exit from this context manager, as soon as we exit from this block, then suddenly all the warnings will be back to their default behavior. So if you know you have something that's like really poorly behaved, but you got to use it anyway, this is a way you can you know, use it uh, in your code. Well, where should we use warnings? Where should we be raising warnings from within our code? Well, one of them is your module. If you write a module, and if your module is going away, if you're making extensive changes, put warnings.warning at the top of the module. And remember that deprecation warning is ignored by default. So if you know that your module is going to be changing, you want to warn people about this, do it. Do it when people are going to be importing your module. Tell people about it. Um, I mean, obviously, this is not the only place you should document it, but it's a good place to, again, give people that annoying sense. Now, another thing you might want to do is notice common mistakes. And I see this all the time in different um, uh, libraries in Python. So if people commonly call a function with the wrong arguments, use a warning to point them in the right direction. Right? One of my favorite examples of this is the pandas library. It is the setting with copy warning. That people do this all the time. They accidentally, they, turn, they take the data in an existing data frame, and then they try to assign to the data that they retrieved, except it's actually not the same data frame as they originally had. They're not setting on the original data frame, they're setting on a copy, thus the setting with copy warning. It notices you're assigning to a copy or that you might be and warns this is a bad idea. So many people make this mistake that this warning is all over the place. Scikit-learn used to warn you if you tried to run predict on a one-dimensional list. It would warn you and it would say, look, you really shouldn't do this. Nowadays, it just gives you an exception. They gave you many, many years. You should have figured it out by now. Now, Python 2 would warn you if you use the global declaration after variable assignment in a function. Now, though, in Python 3, it raises an exception. Again, the warnings are trying to encourage us to change our behavior, like a light slap on the wrist without actually stopping everything from happening. By the way, let's go back to my original example of the fuel gauge. So let's say you're driving, and let's say you ignore the fact that the red hour is going closer and closer to E to empty. And let's say you get the yellow uh, um, you know, light telling you you should fill up with gas, and let's say you ignore that. I can tell you from experience, then your car starts to beep. And that's like the ultimate warning. Your car is beeping and saying, listen, you should fuel up, because if you don't do that, bad things will happen. So warnings are useful. They try to stop us from doing things that are foolish or dangerous. We have them in our cars. You see them in other people's Python programs. And now you know how to include them in your own. Thanks very much for watching this talk. I'd be very happy to be in touch with you, both in the online uh, rooms here at PyCon APAC. I am also available via email. I'm available on Twitter. You can check out my website. You're welcome to join about 25,000 other people on my weekly Better Developers mailing list where I write about Python and software development. Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to hearing your comments and getting your questions. And I hope to see you in person one of these days soon, maybe the next year at PyCon APAC 2023. Thanks again.